Welcome back grade 9s to Tuma Mina teaching. You are tuned in for your second lesson in Term 2. If you are new to our channel, go and check out all of our previous lessons that we have done for EMS thus far. Alright grade 9s, in the previous lesson we had a look at markets and the demand in a market. If you missed our first lesson, please go and have a look at what we did. That way you will be certain that you did not miss out on anything. In this lesson, we will have a look at the supply in a market. Are you ready? Let's go! In our previous lesson, you were taken back in time where money was a foreign concept to people in the world. Let's take a moment and see if you can remember the following terms that will come up on the screen. Find a study buddy and see what you both can remember. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Wowie! It's so great to be back in the modern age again. Let's see if you can remember what these terms are. A market is a place, physical or virtual, where there is a reasonable expectation of finding both buyers and sellers trading goods and services. Examples of these markets are shopping malls, internet platforms and financial trading such as the JSE. Bartering is the exchange of goods and services without the use of money. We've also learned that money has a very big influence on the types of goods and services that consumers buy. For example, consumers tend to buy more products at a cheaper price and less products at a more expensive price. This is known as the law of demand. Today, we will have a look at the supply in the market and how this is determined in the economy. Supply is an economic concept that relates to the quantity of goods and services that producers or suppliers are willing to supply at various prices. Let's take a moment to elaborate on this definition. You are a supplier in the South African market and you would like to supply South Africans with laptops. Would you rather sell laptops at a higher price or at a lower price? Pause this video and have a discussion with your teacher on what you would do in this scenario. I'm sure that all of you have your own opinions for this scenario. It is important to remember that suppliers are also businesses. They have many expenses that they need to pay, such as water, electricity or rent. They would also like to make enough profit to grow and expand the business as well as enjoy some money in their personal life. So therefore, suppliers would charge a higher price for the products and services they sell in order to pay for the expenses, to enjoy business growth and enjoy some profits in their personal life. Because let's face it, entrepreneurs deserve it. It is very difficult to be an entrepreneur, so I'm sure that they should enjoy themselves as well. Let's take Canva as an example. If Canva sells his coffee at a high price, he would be able to pay for all of his expenses, such as water, electricity and rent, as well as expand his business by buying fixed assets. Canva 
can also enjoy his profit earnings from the business and take his family on a luxurious trip to Sun City for the December holidays. An increase in the price of a good or a service results in an increase in quantity supplied and a decrease in the price will also result in a decrease of quantity supplied. There is a direct relationship between price and quantity when we look at supply. When the one increases, the other one will too and vice versa. There are multiple factors as to why the supply would change in a market other than price fluctuating. The first factor is a change in the price of factors of production. If the suppliers need to pay more money for labor or natural resources, or if they decide on their profit markup, they will calculate the payments into the price of the product and determine the highest yet most suitable price to sell the goods and services for. The next factor is an increase in technology. If the supplier invests in technology as a tool of expansion for the business, they will have to pay for this resource. This will increase the price of the product or services they are selling. An example of a product that suppliers will sell at a very high price is branded clothing or a pair of Levi jeans. Suppliers know that consumers are willing to pay a high price for a pair of Levi jeans because it is very good quality. Sometimes the price for specific goods and services is irrelevant because consumers need to purchase it regardless of how much it costs them. An example would be petrol for my car. I need petrol every day to get from home to work and back. So no matter how many times the petrol price increases, I would still need to purchase it. Grade nines, in this lesson, we have only focused on two factors which influence the supply in markets. In class, your teacher might have taught you about more factors. It is your responsibility to make sure that you study everything your teacher tells you to. Let's get to the fun part and plot the supply curve. We will use Canva and IKC as an example. As we know, Canva is a barista who sells the most delicious coffee to the public. Kamva is certain that his coffee is of good quality. We mention that Kamva is a passionate businessman who would like to expand his business but needs to increase the price of his products. Let's help Kamva to set up a supply curve and determine the best price for his coffee. The following schedule indicates the supply of coffees in IKC at various prices. We see that the heading of the schedule reflects the supply schedule for coffee. On the left, we have various prices for each cup of coffee that Kamva will sell. On the right, we see the quantity of coffees that will be sold at various prices. We immediately see that Canva wants to sell more coffees at a higher price and fewer coffees at a lower price. We now need to plot the supply curve using the supply schedule provided. We will always start with a heading for the graph. On the graph, we will have the price on the y-axis and the quantity supplied on the x-axis. Let's plot the supply curve. If Kamva sells coffee at 5 rand a cup, the quantity supplied will be 10 cups. If he sells it at 4 rand per cup, the quantity supplied will be 8 cups. At 3 rand per cup, 
the quantity supplied will be six cups, and so forth. We can see that at one rand per cup, Kamva will only supply two cups of coffee. Kamva therefore prefers selling his coffee at a higher price. We now need to connect the dots to indicate the supply curve. The supply curve is an upward sloping curve, moving from left to right. This reflects a positive relationship between the price and the quantity supplied. Therefore, there is a positive relationship between the price and quantity supplied. When the one goes up, the other one will do. Okay, grade nines, let's take a look at where you would be awarded marks when you complete this question. You will be provided marks for the heading, the axes, the correct labels on each axis, and the plotting of the graph. Now, it's your turn to practice the supply curve. We will use IKC as an example, where Canva will sell breakfast muffins. We will use the supply schedule provided to complete the supply curve. Please download the graph paper in the comment section below. Alternatively, if you cannot access it, you can draw your own graph in your book. We will put up the pause button so that you can complete this activity effectively. Did you manage to complete it? Let's see if you got this one right. Right, grade nines, it is impossible for Kamva to always sell his products at a very high price without consumers complaining about it. Additionally, consumers can also not expect to only pay a very cheap price for Kamva's products. He also has bills to pay. So what should we do about this matter to keep both Kamva and the customers happy? Aha! We have the perfect solution for Kamva and the customers to meet each other in the middle. This will be determined if we can identify the perfect price where Kamva can sell his products at the highest possible price and where consumers can pay the lowest possible price for his goods as well. This point is known as the market equilibrium. When supply and demand meet, the economy is in equilibrium. The allocation of goods and services is at its most efficient because the number of goods supplied is exactly the number of goods demanded. This means that there will be no shortfall or oversupply for the product which sometimes can lead to waste. Behind me, you will see the demand graph we plotted in the first lesson. If we add the supply graph we plotted in this lesson, you will see that the two curves meet at a middle point. This point is known as the market equilibrium. Here, both Canva and the customers are satisfied with the price of the products. The equilibrium price is three rand. The equilibrium quantity is six cups of coffee. Well done, grade nines. You have just completed your second lesson for term two. In the next lesson, we will have a look at the various business sectors. Please remember to scan the following code 
so that you can complete the self-marking assessment. If you enjoyed this lesson, go and buy me a coffee. Until next time, bye!